saved because they saw. They were saved because they believed. You and I can't see Christ today. Nor can we see him perform the miracles, the signs that's written about him in the Gospels. But the record is there. Amen? And that's all we need. That's all we need. Romans says, so then faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. Amen? All you need to do is read the record and faith is stirred up in you. Faith is inspired in you. Hallelujah. All of the evidence that we read about Jesus points to the conclusion that he is indeed God indeed. that came in flesh and saved in the world. Mm -hmm. Every sign that John selected in the gospel and describes in the book a proof of the deity of Jesus Christ. Is this enough for you to really believe Jesus? Sure. Come on, saints. It's time out for us coming to church and not believing. Amen. 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 Because if you believe, it'll make a difference in your life. Yes, we need to believe. Yes. We need to believe. We need to believe. We need to believe. Everything Jesus did while he walked the face of the earth was important. But sinners were not even saved by believing in miracles. Mm, no, sir. They can only be saved by believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe? Yes. You want to see a sign? Sign ain't going to make you believe yes. in Jesus, not to salvation. Father. Let me tell you what I've experienced with people. Folk can be laid up in the hospital just about on that deathbed. Lord, if you give me another chance. Oh, when I get out of this hospital, I'm going to live for you. And they get out of the hospital, and they come to the church house two times. And that's the extent of their living for the Lord. Because once health is restored, and they start feeling better, they go back to their old ways. It's not a sign that's going to cause you to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or be saved. It is your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is your personal faith in his death, burial, and resurrection that will make all of the difference in the world in your life. When you come to that point, you'll live for him. You'll live for him. You'll live for him. You'll live for him. You got the record. All you got to do is read the record. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the signs and wonders. But it's your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's your belief in the resurrected Lord. Do you have enough evidence to really believe in him? You say, Pastor, why are you preaching this to us? We're the church. Come on, let's act like it. If, if the Lord cared enough about us, to prove himself, even though we don't have the first, we don't have, we're not eyewitnesses, but we have the account. Mm -hmm. If he cared enough about us to prove himself to us, why don't we care enough about him to prove ourselves to him and to the world? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Do you believe? As we walk this road to Pentecost, if you read the scripture and follow the, 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 the things that Jesus does, you'll be challenged in your belief. Amen. You'll be challenged in your faith. That's right. And the only thing the Lord is saying to us today is, we need to be challenged in our faith. Amen. Do we really believe? Oh yes, there are many who really believe. Yeah. There are many others. Kind of like, you know, on the fence. <clears throat> But you can't be strapped with fence Amen. when it comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no in-between ground when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no in-between ground. I usually hear old people say, you can't straddle the fence. Amen. I used to think about straddling the fence, and I think about Bob White. <laughs> <laughs> you straddle the fence and slip. 
You get a bomb in the... <laughs> you can't straddle the fence. You're either for God or you're against Him. You either believe Him or you don't believe Him. And if you believe Him, then you're challenged to live. We're talking about personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not talking about standing back and looking and saying, well, this person is not doing this, and that person is not doing that, so why are you challenging me? Amen. We're talking about everybody Amen. personally exercising faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, as Jesus is talking to Peter and challenging Peter, and he's walking with Peter, and Peter looks back and sees John following him, he said, what about him? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, that's none of your business. Uh -huh. If I desire that he stay until I come again, what's that got to do with you? <laughs> you follow me. Yeah. So we're talking about personal faith. Mm -hmm. The Lord is challenging us that if we have personal faith in him, then rise to the occasion of our faith. Rise. Live that life that will glorify him. Yes, it is. Do those things that will glorify him. Amen. Treat people in a way that will glorify him. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Imbibe the scriptures, eat the scriptures in a way that will glorify him. Mm. If you have personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you really have personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Has he given you enough evidence to believe that he's a risen Lord? Mm -hmm. If he has, you ought to trust him. Yes. Amen. Through your belief. Through your daily life. Amen. Not just when you get into crisis. That's right. Because Amen. really when you're in crisis mode, things just don't work the way they always work. If you had been working it's like something breaks down and you haven't been taking care of it and then you need it all of a sudden and you're, you're rushed and you're nervous and you're trying to fix it and then you're just all fumbly with your fingers and you can't get it right. You got to walk with the Lord daily. You can't wait till you get in crisis mode and get, oh Lord, I need you. Then you start thinking about all the sins you committed and while you're in crisis mode, and the Lord, forgive me for this and forgive me for that. The devil will bring all that up in your mind. Right. Forgive me for this, forgive me for that, forgive me for the other thing. You're in crisis mode. You need the Lord. There's no time to be asking the Lord for forgiveness. Mm. Jesus. Father, we thank you. I may not be making sense to y'all, but it's the truth. You're making sense. Mm -hmm. Personal faith. This is not mama's faith, children. It's not daddy's faith. It's your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not husband's faith, wife's wives. It's not wife's faith, husband. It is your personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be friends with Joyce Meyer. You can be friends with T.D. Jakes. And any other famous preacher you know, but it's your personal faith. Amen. Yes. the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, Father. Blessed is the one yeah. who's not seen, yeah. yet he believes, he believes, or she believes. You could be counting in that number if you're not already counting in that number. Mm -hmm. You got to hear the fact that the Lord said, because you believed. Listen. Somewhere along the way, you've questioned yourself about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And somewhere along the way, if you are a firm believer, the Lord has given you reason that you are a shadow of God, even if it's just taking you back to the scriptures mm -hmm. to confirm the fact that he is the risen Lord. Mm -hmm. You should exercise personal faith in him. If that has not happened in your life, then you need to be questioning whether your faith is real. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. 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 Amen.